it's about getting into schools and talking to young people because you know I, I know that people can change uh, and, it, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever and we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there absolutely Hey there guys, we are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults and those who wish to be as different as possible. So thank you very much. To find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do, and more importantly, how you can help, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Hi, this is Jason Jason Page, Page. and you're listening to Chronicles Chronicles Podcast. Podcast. This is Jason Page, and you're listening to Chronicles of Podcast. 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 Oh, I think I'm getting interested to my wave again. Hi, guys. It's the Chronicles of Podcast, and it's the 27th edition. I think I'm pretty sure it's 27. It's 20 after. We're definitely 27 this week. It's 27. And uh, these are the the Chronicles of uh, of Jason Page, Jamie. Yeah, they are. Oh, wow. Do you think we should maybe get this show on the road? Oh, go on then. Let's strap in. I'll drive. Hit it! So, Jamie. Hello, sir. I think we should get to what we've all been waiting for. Yeah, we should. This interview is phenomenal. Here's the piece of resistance. Welcome to the Chronicles of Jason Page. Jason is most well known for singing the theme song to Pokemon, which ended up becoming a global phenomenon. He also does jingles. He does his voiceover work. He's been on stage with people like, I don't know, Michael Jackson, maybe. Maybe try Meatloaf. <laughs> I mean, there was nothing worse than, obviously, Meatloaf passed on the day we interviewed. Yeah. And he didn't know. So there is a very slight moment of where we went, oh. Oh, fuck. Sorry, Jace. Yeah, this might be one of the most awkward moments in podcasting history for me. Because, <laughs> yeah. Other than that, it was just incredible on it's, so many levels. If anyone has seen our interview with Slay Duggy, they know it is one of the most chaotic yet beautiful things you'll ever watch. This tops it. This is chaotic. This is mental, but it's also informative, inspiring, funny. Just, I love everything about this interview. Even if I did have to tell a man that a man that he just worked with and was close with at one point passed away, that bit was fucking awkward. But other than that, absolutely incredible. And the fact that this man realises how much the Pokemon fans has embraced him and brought him into the fold and the fact that he's really embraced that and you could see how much he appreciates it. It's it's really beautiful. This man has done so much stuff. It's, ah, oh, yeah, I love this so much. But he plays a lot of jingles. He sings a lot of songs. He even made his own theme song for the show. Which <laughs> he's made, like, just everything about it was fantastic. And even in the quick fire round at the end, you get a brand new song in there as well. Um, you also get to hear an updated techno housey dance version of the Pokemon theme song as well. Um, Which is it, amazing. And even his phone went off by accident, but his, the, his ringtone was incredible. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it anymore, guys. This is probably one of the best interviews we've ever had. Jason was just 
an inspiration. He's a really, really lovely guy, like really wonderful human. And I'm really excited for you all to hear this. Jamie, any final words? Thank you so much, Jason. This was incredible. Thank you for taking the time out, Jason. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, interviewing this week, he is a jingle artist, a singer of one of the most popular cartoon theme songs ever made, Pokemon. It's Jason Page. Yeah, yeah. And with Jason Am I live, gentlemen? Can you hear me? Am I live? <laughs> you are here. Yeah, you are. Oh, good. Let me turn down so I can hear you guys. <laughs> What's up, gentlemen? Chronicle the podcast with Jason Page. How are you? Jay, that's probably <laughs> the greatest entrance to Zoom in the history of Zoom entrances ever. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, li- I think Jamie's just Jamie done for us today. Now <laughs> that stuff. was incredible. That's it. That's all you guys need. It's all you guys need. I actually, I'm not getting your audio out of the right spot, but hold on. Let me get you guys coming out of my headphones. There you go. You guys should be coming out of my headphones now. Can you hear us? Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's hear you. How can you, how do we sound? Uh oh. I'll put volume. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Health and love. There we go. That's a fantastic. <laughs> wow, here we go. Here's what's supposed to happen. Chronicles of Podcast. Chronicles of Podcast. With Jason Bay. Chronicles of Podcast. Chronicles of Podcast. Chronicles of Podcast. Chronicles of Podcast with Jason happening with just this mix going you guys are coming through my headphones everything is clear i can hear you you can hear me we're live through the looper jason page has finally entered the chronicles of podcast been a long time waiting for this thing guys uh, my whole life to get here with you <laughs> well i'm sorry we left you waiting so long but my whole life yeah my whole life that's why you've achieved so much in your life so you could come on this show and talk about it that's right. That's right. Exactly I've been doing it whole life just to tell you guys about it. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's there. <clears throat> you got to tell everybody about your life. I mean, if I, otherwise your life is just, you know, it's actually your life has to be first important to you. And then once it's important enough to you, you can tell, you can tell the world. The world. <laughs> but first, you got to be in love, in love with your own life. That is. And one thing one that thing helps me be in love with my life is this looper right here. <laughs> Tell you that, and this coffee, and the love coffee. Oh, the love! Yeah, we love that. We love that as well. That's what we love. So, gentlemen, tell me how this whole podcast thing happened. What's going on here? In what 
What said? Sorry, what? So like, basically, we. How did this whole thing happen? How'd you get? How'd you get in into this whole game? This podcasting game, podcasting game. So Jamie used to do one on his own years ago, um, years which ago. he did like yeah. six episodes of, and then he got. I think he got bored of it or something, didn't you? Yeah, you were like, in on your own. Yeah, and then you were like, "Oh, I want to get back into it. I miss it." Blah blah blah. So back in 2019, um, Jamie was looking for somebody and r- rang me and asked, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know. I've never done anything like this before." And here we are so now, nearly three years later. Yeah. Excellent. What, what do you guys, uh, what is your focus of, uh, of communication usually? What are you guys usually talking about? Look, we literally just chronicle people's lives and careers. So we, we have all different people from all different sorts of backgrounds. We've had makeup artists, musicians, journalists, costume designers, journalists. We've had yeah. all sorts, yeah. Doctors, we, lawyers, germ theorists, sales we've had, theorists. We've had a doctor. We haven't had yeah. the rest. We've had a doctor. <laughs> cool cool that's excellent that's excellent guys yeah i mean uh all we do is really talk i mean that's that's our primary our primary function here on the planet is to talk to each other so exactly. it makes sense that you guys would have a show of people talking to each other you're you're yeah. executing the primary you know requirement of the human experience right here i would just appreciate the second it. experience is to sing which you, need, you need a little reverb little delay to sing <laughs> If you talk with too much delay, it just gets weird. You just talk, talk, talk delay, delay the whole time. It's weird. weird. Unless, Unless you're, you're doing, doing God, God voice. voice. And then <laughs> God needs to have delay <laughs> to further <laughs> exemplify <laughs> his message. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If I had that, I would literally be doing that all day. We're like, Jamie, go and get dressed and leave the house. Chronicles of the Podcast. Yes, yeah. Um, but anyway, we're here to talk about you, Jason. So we're here to uh, uh, learn all about you, find out, uh, you know, how you uh, ended up to where you are today. So this is this is the uh, the goal, the aim. I came from over there and I walked Excellent. around. I spun around a couple of times in the middle of the room. I sat down and then I finally came over to this part where I am today. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. But yeah, we are literally going to absolutely bombard the living hell out of you with questions. How does that right. sound? All right. I was going to say, I was just going to do a little intro, and then, as Tom said, we'll bombard you with questions. All right. Hello, everyone, and yet again, we bring you another incredible guest. Today's (laughs) guest is a singer-songwriter, most (laughs) notably known for singing what might be the greatest (laughs) cartoon theme song of all time, Pokemon. But that is a tiny part of this man's career. He's also done voiceover work for movies and TV, performed on Broadway, and with musicians such as Aerosmith, Enrique Iglesias, and this small time performer you might have heard of named Michael Jackson. Small Today, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, these are the chronicles <laughs> of Jason Page. Chronicles 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 of Jason Page. These are the chronicles of Jason Page. His whole life is going before your face. You can ask him anything the folks want to know. Got questions up the air, they gonna ask me on their show. It is a game. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm just <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> to be honest with you, Jason, just phenomenal. That's I all mean, I can say about it. Uh, that's what you wanted, right? The Chronicles of Jason Page. Damn right. That's yes. exactly what we're after. Yeah. Peace out. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right thank you. Thank you. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason, how has your pandemic season been? How have things been the last couple of years? Oh, my God. Best apocalypse ever! <laughs> God, I have a reverb for that. Best apocalypse ever. Have you guys had a better apocalypse than this? I mean, come on. This shit is off the hook. I mean, we got to stay at home for a bit and not do a whole hell of a lot and enjoy the weather. Ramp that shit up is what I say. Let's get (laughs) more apocalypse going on. How many more people can we get running down the street with crazy bubbles on their heads and hiding in their houses? Get them all in the house. 
It's just in one. Get them all in shut one. Shut down all the schools. Every school, shut it down. Make sure it shut down. Businesses, make sure that they can't actually occupy more than 5% of the business, I think. You know, as long as we, I mean, squeeze, it's just squeeze the living daylights out of people until they pop is what I think should happen. Because then once the people pop, then their true selves can be explored and expressed. But while they're just squeezing a little bit, they're just, it's just kind of like they just turn up the heat a little bit and not enough frogs are jumping out of the pot. So I want that heat to be turned up on high. Pow, all the frogs jump out of the pot. And you know, are free again from the from the the cook that's warming us up and cooking us up, making frog legs. They're doing it. They're just they're just making frog legs like you know it's too slow. You know, we need yeah, to get yeah. these frogs jumping out of the pot. More frogs have jumped out of the pot than ever before in human history, and it's it's in, it's incredible. So uh, I've been I jumped out of the pot in 1990. Eight, I think so. I've been out of the pot for a long time. Saying, "Come on, you guys, jump out of the pot, jump out of the pot!" And now there's lots of people jumping out of the pot. It's really, it's really cool. It's, there's lots of frogs jumping out of the pot, and I think that it's it's a incredibly exciting time in human history because it's never been, it's never there's never been this many frogs on the on the stove sitting no. around watching the rest of the frogs inside of the pot get cooked. Crazy. What about the lobsters? What about the lobsters, Jason? The lobsters too. The lobsters. The lobsters. They don't get out as easy. They can't jump. And when they get them, they 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 put a little rubber band around their pinchers. They can't even like crawl. You know the cr- yeah, crabs. Yeah. They like what they do is like they'll pile on top of each other. And one crab will get to the top, and then the other crabs will use that crab to get out. It's sort of the same situation. Uh, but the lobsters are a little more clumsy. They don't. They don't. They don't have that opportunity. But the frogs. They can jump out individually. They can jump out. They don't even need each other to jump out. They just need to know that it's getting hot, and then they jump yeah. out. Anyway, so I'm so glad I answered your question. Best apocalypse ever. <laughs> <laughs> Crustaceans work in teams. Frogs is like fuck you all. I'm going. I'm doing this on my own. I don't need you. Work in teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, teamwork is good, but the individual has to be strong enough to figure that shit out for himself. Yeah. And when the individual does, then, you know, he can lead the team. And it really just takes that individual to inspire other individuals to jump out. And then, you know, I just feel kind of bad because I jumped out in 1996 and nobody saw me. I was just, I was already out. I've been outside of the pot going, come on, come on, for a long time. And now it's like, you know, I can't jump back in the pot to jump out and show everybody. I just got to stand outside here, outside of the pot and say, hey, guys, I've been out here for a long time. Yeah, been waiting for 25 years. Where have you all been? It's been a long time. Twenty. I've been out of the pot since I sang the Pokemon theme song in 1998, actually. That's about when I jumped out of the pot. Ah, uh, okay. And that I shit just that exploded. Longer. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah, so. So talk about jumping out of a pot, then. Take yeah. us back to young Master Page. What did you? What did young Master Page want to be when he grew up? Was it always music and performance for you, or was it something else entirely? Um, Young Master Page, I think, started uh, getting his own ideas in in uh, grade school. When you know you're watching, go speed racer, go speed racer, go! I wanted to be a race car driver and drive like Speed Racer did. You know, around around these tubes and spin around upside down and jump off of the car into the water, drive on the bottom of the ocean and zip out again. And you know, all these incredible pathways and and not ever crash the car or get hurt that's really what what young mr page (laughs) wanted to do um and then young mr page uh started writing songs and then young mr page was in uh rockaway queens which is uh on the beach in rockaway eighth grade and my ninth grade school was really like not a cool zoned school i didn't want to go there so i auditioned for the high school of music and art You know that song? Yeah, the high school of music and art. Yeah, it's it's the theme song from the movie to the sh- to, to, from the movie Fame about the high school of music and art, which is in New York City, which is a school that I found out about because of that movie that I auditioned for because of that movie and got accepted as a voice major in ninth grade to this school way up in Harlem while I was living in Queens. 
Um, and that kind of just, you know, introduced us to the fact that kids could be really accelerated performers and, uh, and the school would help us do that. So I became a voice major and started studying voice, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, moved into the New York City area in the middle of my sophomore year. And my mom knew some street performers on Columbus Avenue were magicians, balloon sculptors, musicians, and street vendors, and they used to hang out. And some of them stayed on my floor, actually, in my, my apartment, where my mom and I lived on Upper West Side. And they taught me how to do magic and juggling and balloon sculpting. I went out on the street and started doing this balloon sculpting and this magic, stopping crowds and making money as a 14-year-old. And I got a manager, started going on auditions, started having a band, and my, my friends in school, and then basically just, you know, Living the dream that was fed to us as 13 year olds in, in the late 80s, which was the rock and roll dream, basically. Uh, those were the icons. MTV was just coming on. We saw these people that were not just on our parents' record collections, but were actually on TV rocking out. And that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be Bon Jovi. I wanted to be Michael Jackson. I wanted to be these these icons that what had a voice that would able be able to reach the masses with a song and uh unfortunately none of the songs that i had written ever reached the masses until i started doing jingles and realized holy shit i can reach the masses by going subway, subway eat fresh. Eat fresh. wow everybody <laughs> fucking heard that uh, <laughs> oh, it's sanity with the teeny weeny giggly with me baby emily in a stroller for the first time today and it's a bitsy teeny weeny giggly wiggly baby emily barbie walks and emily laughs right away you know barbie commercials and shit the quilted quick picker upper when you get nausea hot and indigestion upset stomach diarrhea hey pepto max these crazy tv commercials were actually reaching the masses and I thought, yeah, uh, young Paige can reach the masses and make some money with these commercials. I actually was doing commercials visually. I was in some commercials and I made, I made some good money on them. And then uh, the jingles started happening when the band reality started falling apart and record companies started dropping my band and, you know, proving to be the, the, the average record company story. Oh, they don't want it. They want to release the wrong songs. Yeah, this record company's trying to change us, man. We're not going to change. We're going to be who we want to be. The very best like no one ever was, dude. <laughs> you can't turn us into, you can't turn us into new kids on the block. We're, we're chili peppers, dude. <laughs> So my band was like the Chili Peppers, and uh, they wanted us to be new kids on the block, and we basically said, no way. We got dropped, and we, uh, we tried to pursue our success without record companies to be Bon Jovi, to be Michael Jackson, to be Chili Peppers, to be that iconic band. That was the band dream that I was sold in my, in my teenage years. And... Uh, and I have the dream now, which has just been articulated in a different form, which is to, to, to touch millions of people with my voice, billions of people with my voice. Uh, and that dream is basically fulfilled, but it just it looks different than the way I wanted to fulfill it. Mm. But the, it's still the same. The essence of it is the same. And it's I think it's the same for everybody. We're talking. That's it. We're just using our voices to express our our highest selves to the world. And uh, our highest selves are right here in this podcast right now. In 1998, my highest self was in the studio. Gotta catch him up. Taste the date. In a studio. Doing a jingle. Sounding like he's 14. You know, it was just like, that's how I did it then. And this is how I do it now. So uh, that was what little, when little Jason, <laughs> master, master Jason, you called him. Uh, got his ideas to, to do what he was going to do. And uh, I'm still doing it, basically. Um, but, but the lesson, I think, is that, you know, you, you're moving forward in this direction, but a lot of the value that you create isn't right here. It's actually right here. And all you have to kind of do is turn back around and see how, you've, what, how and what you've created and how it actually satisfies what you wanted 
but it doesn't look exactly the same. It's like the nutrients, the garden you're growing has all kinds of nutrients that you can use, but you're like, oh, that's not what I want. That's a weed. It's actually not a weed. It's actually a dandelion, which has the most nutrients in it as the dandelions do because they grow through the cracks and through the traffic and through the bad air, water, and, and you know, low light scenarios. They, they still bring the nutrients. Pokemon and these brands that I sang for are like the weeds that are growing behind me. And I'm like, ah, I don't want those weeds. I want to be a rock star like Bon Jovi. I want to have, ooh, she's a little runaway. Daddy and girl, girl learn fast. fast. All, the All the things you couldn't good. say. Or, I'm going to make a change <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> <one's laughs> <life. laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a difference. You know, I'm like, I want to be Michael Jackson here. I don't want to be some jingle guy. But it turns out that the jingle weeds that I just planted in a few hours in 1998 turned into a jungle, an ecosystem, a jungle of opportunity that that far exceeds anything. Like if my band were the were the level of like, I don't know, red hot chili peppers. And the and the the most effect I had, everybody was. Well, you got to, got to give it to your mama, ma, ma. and you got to got to give it to your father. Or sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my only home. I hate that song under the bridge. <laughs> if that was my legacy, I would be you know it would be not as satisfying as as the legacy of Pokemon. So. You know, that's that's a uh, master Jason for you right there. Good question, guys. Thanks for letting me go on the tangent. This is the Chronicles of Jason Page. Now, you obviously, you've mentioned Pokemon, so we might as well talk about it. How did that come about? Because, you know, that is probably what you're best known for. So, did you audition for that or did they approach you? Um, well, every session I do is a paid audition, basically. Um, at the time, 1998, and still I do, you know, 50 to 100 sessions a year it all depends once a week i'm singing for something other than you know my own joy <laughs> singing for some product uh some jingle session some uh situation i just sang a sam adams a sam adams commercial this week and and a demo for somebody else making a documentary movie and then i sang something came out this so it's you I've been waiting for so long. Yes, it's to you. Uh, for this show called Smiling Friends, it's an adult swim show, and I'm one song in it. Anyway, every week I'm doing multiple sessions for things. They're they're auditions and demo. They're paid auditions. So Pokemon would pay me a certain amount of money to come in and work on the song and sing it. And if they like it, then we could, then we continue to do the final of it. Um, and if they don't like it, then they hire somebody else for the next demo. And they say, yeah, we, we don't like that guy, but we do like the song, but we don't like that guy's voice. Get somebody else to do it. Um, I would work for this music house numbers of times before they, uh, they're called, I think they were called paradise music at the time, rave music, uh, John Leffler and John Sigler, the actual uh, writers of the songs, two guys that, that were the producers and writers, and they had that company. And uh, I had done Domino's Pizza Delivers or something, you know, a couple other commercials for them before. And they were like, yeah, he's got the rock young voice. Bring him in. He'll be good for it. Um, just like all the other things that I'm doing now, they, the people have a, a request. They want someone to sound like Ray Charles. Georgia. Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song, keeps Georgia on my mind, yeah, or, you know, guess the other night at a hometown football game, or, you know, Garth Brooks, or, you know, just the other night at a hometown football game, if they want, you know, Bob Dylan, whoever they want, they just give me a little brief and I do the song. Pokemon, they wanted the young rock sound, and I went in and did it. So that's pretty much how, how those jobs are <clears throat> acquired back in the day. And still to this day, someone will know that I have the skills. They'll watch my vocal reel, and they'll say, oh, he can sing just like, So now I come to you with open arms. 
it's, it's high as fuck. I don't even know the right key. Nothing to hurt. Believe what I say. So here I am. Fucking journey. That dude. Why? Why? Why must he sing everything so high, that guy? <laughs> Just showing off. Steve Perry, right. Steve Perry. That's right. Steve Perry. Yeah, whatever they want, whatever you guys want, you know, you just shout it out and then I launch into it and then you go, oh, yeah, it kind of sounds like that. We'll take them. We'll use them for our gig. You know, you guys got a new Chronicles of podcast and you want it to sound like, uh, you, I don't know, uh, Metallica. Chronicles of podcast and Chronicles, you know, and then I jump on and I sound like uh, I sound like Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually know anything about Pokemon going into this gig? Or was it just a, ah, they're the birds, I'll sing it? Um, well, you know, we get briefed in the in the, uh, in the the studio to, to know what it is they want. And they had a little clip of the show. So we got to watch a little clip of the show. We didn't know very much about it. Um, it was a clip in Japanese. They hadn't even overdubbed it yet. So we kind of knew the vibe and what it looked like and what they wanted. Uh, and I think there was some... There were some articles about that ele- epileptic seizure thing that happened oh, yeah. uh, back in the beginning. That's pretty much all anybody <laughs> in the world outside of Japan knew about Pokemon at the time. So <laughs> it's, it's mad that, you know, you've gone into the studio, you've gone, right, these are the words. I know it's about small creatures that give people epilepsy. And the next thing you know, it's like the most iconic cartoon with the most iconic theme song. Did you expect it to be as like as iconic as it became um well like i said you know i'm doing 50 to 100 of these at least a uh, a year and we've got lego mania 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 Things like that. Lego, Lego Mania, and uh, I had written that actually with uh, with my partner Russ Irwin, who was in uh, Aerosmith at the time, <clears throat> and we wrote the Lego Mania theme, and that was d- divided up into like ten different commercials, and went on. It was on all the time between ninety five and two thousand and two. So I knew the potential uh, financial success that a, a successful jingle could have. Um, and how it can help grow a company to massive proportions as Lego was kind of a big company at the time, but they really, really excelled, uh, from that point on, uh, they started opening, you know, bigger stores. They had a theme park soon after, and now they've got stores and malls and all kinds of places. So the fact that I'm Lego mania, Lego mania. Was a good on ramp to know that we could do stuff that could be huge. A um, couple of other jingles at the time. I had also been Subway Eat Fresh and, uh, you know, some other bigger ones. Do, 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 always Coca Cola. Yeah. That so, was you. That was one of them. Yeah. I mean, when they make these commercials, they make a hundred different ones and some of them go in different markets. Some of them go on the radio. Some of them are on TV. Some of them are on this commercial. Some of them are just a tag of another commercial. So needless to say, I've sung uh, for uh, almost every brand. <laughs> I've done something for every major brand at some point. Uh, those are just the familiar ones that I that I that you may have heard. There was the Coca-Cola one was in a blockbuster video. Uh, collaboration commercial and just recently I sang uh, catch the feeling catch that feeling oh Coca-Cola Why I'm always doing these things way too high <laughs> catch the feeling catch that feeling oh Coca-Cola that's a little bit better okay right there but uh, yeah so uh, it's got I, this I, Steve Perry poster behind your computer like I'll get you <laughs> <laughs> so you know you get you these uh the there's an expectation to hit the ball out of the park it's just that we don't know how the how big the park is 
because we're just swinging and we're just hitting it as far as we can. But the, the ballparks keep getting bigger and bigger because of you guys, because of people in the Pokemon ecosystem saying, hey, this isn't just, you know, a regular ballpark where you just have a regular song and a regular TV show. Now, boom, we got games. Oh, boom, we got ice show. Oh, boom, we got a fucking Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade float. Oh, we got cards. Oh, we got another video game. Oh, we got giant ecosystem oh we're doing it in we're doing it in in south america oh we're going to south africa oh we're, we have cards in germany oh god we card we got cards in japan oh we're we're worldwide now we're not just a a product in the united states so the 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 grand slam of hit of hitting that song out of the park which is what i try to do in every situation this interview included just kept on becoming a bigger and bigger grand slam as people like you start their own businesses and have their own realities growing up that incorporate the Pokemon ecosystem and pull their cards out and start making Facebook channels and start making Pokemon go and start listening to the music and start, you know, doing cosplays and comic cons and everything in the Pokemon ecosystem. It represents the size of how big this song could be. Lego Mania is pretty big, but the song never got, and we're going to be doing a remake of Lego Mania this year, actually. Oh, nice. It's going to be excellent. But, you know, this song never was never a single on the Billboard charts. It never became an album of songs. It never became an eye show. It never be, but Lego is getting there. They, they just have to do a couple things once we put this song out <laughs> to blow themselves up even further and to be competitive with Pokemon. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I'm hitting it out of the park every, every time, bro. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. On the Chronicles of Podcast. I'm hitting it out and, you know, hoping this goes to a, a million people, you know, every day, that, every day. That'd be unbelievable. I mean, that's the dream. So, you know, we, um, so from all of your work with like doing jingles, et cetera, you've obviously now been on stage with Michael Jackson. You've performed on, you know, with Meatloaf and um, Frankie Valli, uh, Foreigner, that sort of thing. Like, did, does that ha- did this uh, working in jingles escalate you to be doing stuff with these big artists? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's basically about building up the skills so that yeah. when, uh, when Desmond Child said, hey, you know, we need some backgrounds for Meatloaf, I was like, yeah, oh yeah, I can do me love. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. No, 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 I won't do that. You know, Meatloaf was, uh, I was right there with my Meatloaf impression. He was like, oh yeah, we got to have this guy sing backgrounds. And then that led to, you know, doing writing sessions for the Scorpions and other things like that. So each situation is another, like I said, stepping up to the plate and hitting it out. It just it depends on how big the uh, how big the ball field is, and uh, these uh, the, the you know the, every time it's an example that I can show to somebody and say, hey, y- here's what I did for Meatloaf. Here's the backgrounds I did for the Scorpions. Here's uh, here's me singing with this guy, and then it it lends uh, credibility to the next guy to say, oh yeah, he he sounded like Michael Jackson. Oh, he can rap. <laughs> Protection for gangs, clubs, and nations. Cause a grief in human relations is a turf war on a global scale. I'd rather hear both sides of the tale. See, it's not about races, just places, spaces. Where your blood comes from is where your space is. I've seen a shop get dollar. I'm not gonna spend my life being the color. You know, so. So there it is. I could just send that to somebody and say, oh, yeah, he raps, he raps. And then you build up these examples. Uh, and even if I don't get the job, I've done I've done the demo, so I have the demo to get another job with that demo of me sounding like the thing that they wanted. Uh, so yeah, it's like a, it's like a compiling uh, compiling my resources at each time to uh, to make myself more valuable in the future in the event that somebody wants me to sound like something or other for another gig. So it's just got the world's and now and now it's kind of interesting now it's interesting because i've got i've 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 done so much promoting of me as the pokemon guy that people might say oh oh, we can get the pokemon guy to sing that and they'll be like no 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 that's not the voice we need we need somebody that sounds like ray charles like oh dude that's me too that's me Nah, he's the Pokemon guy. He, he, we need a Ray Charles type guy. So, you know, there's a little bit of pigeon holding, holding that can go on right now, yeah. but I, you know, I don't mind for, for this, the, the legacy that I can share with people now, 
Uh, we just we just need to expand that out of Pokemon into the other things and into my own music as well, which I have been creating and producing. So obviously you mentioned Meatloaf then, and obviously today we all found out that Meatloaf passed away, unfortunately. But what was Meatloaf like to work with? How what, what? what was he like? Did you not? Know what do you mean that? Meatloaf passed away? Did you not know that? When today? It's not today? No. Yeah. No. no. Did you see today? Yeah, yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dudes, you're not supposed to tell me that lie on air. It's been everywhere. I assumed you knew. <laughs> oh man, I had no idea. I'm just sitting here. I just got up, did my interview with you guys. I'm not. I'm not. Sorry, I Jason. <laughs> I, I feel really bad. Man. What I do, I try to keep myself out of the social media madness um, until I take care of business, and then I like at e- in the evening I will let the nonsense in. Not that this is nonsense, but this is you know these are headlines, and headlines, headlines. Uh, if it bleeds, it leads. 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 If it please, it is. 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 If it Meatloaf has left us. Meatloaf has left the building. Wow. All right, then. You know, this is uh, this is the inevitability of life, the legacy we leave behind. This is this is what he did. Anything for love. He could do anything for love. He could do anything for love. But he won't do that. No, 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 you won't do that. <laughs> All right, there we go. See, so, yeah, what was me? Like oh, my God. The other song. I die for you and that's a fact. I die for you and that's a fact. That's what he said. And he did. He died for us finally. You guys, how did he die? Do you know? I've not said. No, just said he. Just 74 years. Yeah, 74, family yeah. around him, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's the way to do it. Be have your family around you and not be in the hospital environment. You can choose your own exiting. It's very important part when you came in. Extremely important. And when you go out, second most important <clears throat> event in, in your life. These two events, they're, they're, they're hidden events from us. They're hidden by the hospital. And it's very important that we have both of these events be revealed and and we take control back over these two primary events in our lives and uh i i'm what you're telling me meatloaf did take control over the second event by having his family there with him on his exit on his departure yeah good that's good that's good i feel better about that now sorry to yeah sound effect, just so sorry to bum you out yeah i didn't <laughs> Well, hey, this is live. You know, it's real. It's a real deal. I was, uh, I was, uh, you know, I'm going to have to be a little bit more intentional, even more intentional than I was before this interview <laughs> to leave my legacy in the way that that meatloaf would have had he been on Chronicles of Meatloaf <laughs> <clears throat> right before this. You guys didn't have meatloaf on. So, uh, you know, I'm lucky oh, to be on. You guys. You know? so, 
you've had like the opportunity to work with so many amazing artists. Like I've read that you did a uh, pink with Aerosmith with, with yeah. Howard Stern and obviously perform with Michael Jackson and the Michael Jackson tribute concert. There's, there's so many huge artists you've worked with. Are there any particular performances and moments that like stand out to you when you look back? Um, well, definitely the Michael Jackson rap situation has a, is a big standout. Um, the uh, the Aerosmith beatboxing on Howard Stern is a standout as well. That was one of the first times that I had to sustain the beatboxing for an entire song. Like, you know, usually I just and then I loop and that's it. And, you know, and and it, it, back in the day before the looper, that was the day before the looper with my friends, you know, we'd just be doing a eight bar, 16 bar situation. When Steven and, and Steven said, hey, come do this, he basically just said, just jump in on this little spot where the drums, what breaks down the drums and vocals, third verse in, in a live show, actually pulled me up on stage that, to, to do it in, uh, I think it was in <clears throat> Hartford, Connecticut, in an outdoor space or somewhere in Connecticut, outdoor, 25,000 people. And he said, yeah, just come on out. I'll hand you the microphone. And I was like, you're kidding. You're crazy. I'm not coming out on the stage to beatbox. And he, he did. He pulled me out on stage and I beatboxed. But the, but the Howard Stern thing was the full three-minute song. And by the end of it, you can hear I'm like, <laughs> I'm like oh, my God, this is going on so long. I'm, I'm hyperventilating. I'm starting to trying to get lightheaded and uh, it was a it was a it was a it was a new level of like stamina that I had to reach and now guys I have to say I I, I used to be a really great beatboxer but now the kids that are beatboxing I'm like the 10th floor of a hundred floor beatboxing building and these guys are on the top floor CEOs of beatboxing world I used to be the CEO of a 10 floor building when nobody really knew what was beatboxing was and now the YouTube is let everybody out of the out of the box out of the beatbox everybody can learn from each other and it's not just you know the few guys that you can hear recordings of like when i did a howard stern thing in 98 there was like 10 beatboxers that i that we knew of that we could you know listen to some little things of it it was mostly just our friends that we could learn from in person but then as youtube in the past 10 years spread the beatboxing love these guys are doing fucking incredible shit <laughs> I can't even. I can't even do half the shit that they do. I can't do it. I'm the tenth floor. They're like on flick their cheek and like, oh, and shit like that. I mean, all kinds of shit, all kinds of new sounds and stuff that everybody's making and sharing, and and I'm I'm just old school. I have the loudest snare drum. <laughs> That's my, you know, my record is the loud snare drum. Uh, but these kids are doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And they're 12 years old doing it. And the girls are doing it, too. Girls beatboxing. Everybody. It's like a, it's a new language that has so, has grown in the past 10 years like no other language. Like no language ever yeah, was. was. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was uh, those were two highlights. Michael Jackson rapping, which I gave you the little the rap of, that I did live, and uh, beatboxing with Steven Tyler. That was pretty cool. That's amazing. So I love that you've also worked on like movies and TVs and stuff, like doing singing and voiceover work, like Sausage Party, Rick and Morty, Phineas and Ferb. But one that stood out to me especially was working with Kermit and Miss Piggy. Yeah. What was uh, it you did exactly with? Life's a happy song when there's someone by your side to sing along. Um, that's a song in one of their latest, one of the more, more recent Muppet movies where they've got, it's the same kind of thing that I do in a lot of movies. They'll have like a scene where uh, dozens of characters sing a line. Life's a fillet of fish. And uh, life's, a, life's a like a lamb. And there's all these characters that appear in that song. So I'll sing in the in the main the main group. So I'll like double or triple the melody. Life's a happy song when there's someone by your side to sing along. And then as those characters appear in the set and the song, I'll redub their voices because it's very hard to get everybody perfectly recorded live when they're running down a line of characters. Everybody's microphone isn't properly there. They, they, you know, they're basically just recording the people for posterity on set and then they re record them with higher sound quality later on. 
and uh, that that many of those voices in 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 uh, numbers of those scenes where all the Muppets are singing uh, are my voice, basically. So dozens of characters that you know, I'll just I'll do a little, I'll do a character like that, and then I'll do a character like this, and then I'll do it at the you know one of the other weird guys, and you know all these people that are jumping in, and then I'll do a Kermit. Uh, sound. Life's a happy song when there's someone by your side to sing along. And then the other dude that's in it, uh, I forgot the kid's name, uh, movie star who's the main guy in that. And I'll oh, just Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. I'll sing like, Life's a happy song when there's someone by your side to sing along. Kind of a Jason Siegel normal voice just to thicken up all of the, the group behind him so that it sounds like a bunch of guys like him. Uh, you know, and just, just that's that's what we do in movies we that's how movies are made they're 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 piecemeal together like that uh, i've worked on both of those last muppet movies uh in that capacity and on the sausage party movie with all those song all the all the singing food in the gro- in the grocery store trying to get out of the store i'm a whole bunch of characters of those guys and the same kind of thing in uh annie and uh jersey boys and numbers of other movies that that kind of happens fairly often it's really cool. I never thought of it like that, but they, they do that, like just get people to sing just to boost that background noise up. That's, that's really clever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they'll know what the song is and they'll be playing it uh, playback while they record it for the people that are performing it on camera to lip sync to. And they'll record them to whatever degree they can. But sometimes the guy that they got to lip sync it doesn't match the guy who they originally had on the video. He's a big, you know, life's a fill of fish. He was like a big, burly, uh, bake, uh, a fish market guy. And like the guy on the vi- on the on the sound was like, life's a fill of the fish. He was like a different guy. So now we got to make him a big guy again. And instead mm-hmm. of calling that guy in to the studio, they just call me in and I do all 10 guys at once. <laughs> this is easier. Makes it easier. And that makes sense now when you see them like IMDb and was like additional voices. Well, that's why, because they do. Yes. Additional voices. voices. <laughs> that's what I am. I'm additional voices. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome additional, additional voices. voices. Hello. How are you? I'm Hobo. 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 Three times on top of the whole track. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> last thing I, I wanted to mention before we like start wrapping up, you've you've written and produced music with huge artists like the Scorpions, like you said. You've worked, you've worked with a dream podcast guest of mine in Desmond Child. He's someone I really desperately want to have on this show. But you've also I mean, re- used to work in the dance. You oh, just oh. try, been down on his luck. Oh, so tough. So tough. Thank you, Thank you. Desmond. Oh, in fact, he worked with Kiss, so therefore I love him. He's so got I a thousand. He's got a thousand things. I work with Kiss too. Did you? I, I was. Uh, I don't know if that you saw that on my resume, but when I, my band, when I was fourteen years old, got produced by Paul Stanley during. These are crazy, 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 crazy. During the crazy nights days, Paul Stanley became my producer of the band. And uh, he and I sang backgrounds in the studio together. And then I did some Paul Stanley backgrounds on one of his one of his records in the early 2000s as well. Yeah, Paul Paul Stanley, Stanley, dude. dude. Oh, I did. I did not know. That. Yeah, one oh, of the best I'm voices ever. Now. Okay, I don't want to wear anything else now. I just want all Paul Stanley stories now. No, oh my god, <laughs> he was so he was so it was so cool. It was like the first celebrity that I was like working, literally standing in the studio singing backgrounds <clears throat> on the song that I wrote. That he was, he and I were going one on one, me on you. I want to show you what I love. That was the part that we had to sing together, standing there together, singing it. We're like, wow, I'm singing with Paul Stanley. Yo. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> that Crazy Nights record, that what we were loving that Crazy Nights record. Love that record. Love His that voice record. is so high. I remember he sang at one point. Well, I can walk, walk, I walk, talk, I can talk my way. Oh. My way, one vocal, he, sang, he sounds like a chipmunk. Talk, I can talk. <laughs> 
like so high. I'm like, dude. I've listened to an interview recently, and like, why don't you do any non makeup stuff now? And he's like, I can't hit those notes anymore. Right, you can't <laughs> hit those notes anymore. Talk, talk, talk. I think it might have been higher than that, but it probably was his high pitch. Yeah, yeah. There, there's something to be said for recording vocals that you can sing after you turn fifty. <laughs> Before you turn, before you turn fifty, so that you could actually have a career singing your music after you're fifty. I don't know how Paul Stanley's gonna ever sing his shit again. He's got to do it all, put put all the high parts on track, and then just sing what he can sing live. <laughs> but most of his shit is high. I have that problem with the Pokemon theme song. I got to get up early to rehearse for that shit if I want to go. You teach me, and I'll teach you. Hi, come on. Why? I mean, what's going on? See, it was not for reproduction. It was only for the TV show. Uh, uh. The fact you made your own custom ringtone. Yeah, you can get that free ringtone at jasonpage.com if you sign up for the mailing list. They will send you that ringtone for free. Pick it up, answer it, or put it on mute. <laughs> See, uh, I was in. I actually was singing in a, in a key a little too high, but there you go. Just when you need the key to the Pokemon theme song, it comes on your phone. That is incredible. What timing? Anyway, my but, original question. <laughs> oh yeah, we were on Kiss. We were talking about Kiss yes. now. Well, I was going to say, like, you've written and produced your own musicals, uh, Bucks and writing pictures. So what were they about? How did, how did that come about? Um, a friend of mine, Mark Wilson, created this, uh, this show. He actually, the first thing he got me interested in was the show, A Beatles Gospel Nativity. It's called Both A Hard Day, Silent Night. And uh, we do it every year. We do this Beatles Gospel Nativity. We take over Christmas. Basically, we are Christmas. Uh, <laughs> that's it it's just christmas is the both beatles beatles musical in our community this year we did it during covid we did it outside we got a 60 person cast a choir and a band and uh, i wrote gospel arrangements to the beatles music to tell the nativity story uh, mark put all these songs together back in 1999 and we got the idea to do this to, to put this musical together and then we gospelized it in 2000 and seven or eight and we've been in like 13 years doing this thing where uh you know we we, we basically joseph and mary <clears throat> are having their situation having the birth of the baby and singing god singing beatles music like you know uh the angel of the lord comes the baby comes to mary and says here comes the sun and mary goes what what are you talking about this time <laughs> it's all right and the choir goes it's all right it's all right <laughs> And then Mary, Mary turns around and goes, help, I need somebody, help, does anybody help, I need someone help. And then Joseph comes back and is like, yo, what, what, what happened? You're pregnant? She goes, we can work it out, work it out, we can work it out. <laughs> they sing and then eventually, you know, the kings come in and they're like, they, they bring them gifts and then they finally have the baby and they sing golden slumbers fill your eyes smiles awake you when your eyes sleep pretty darling do not cry and i will sing a lullaby and the crowd sings boy you're gonna carry that weight carry that weight a long time and they crowd in they try to get to the baby you're gonna carry that weight carry that weight and i say stop when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. It's just an incredible thing. We all sing Imagine. We, we bring the world together in the name of the miracle baby that is the message of good will and, and brotherly love and the individual saving the world with their own unique individual efforts and that each baby is this individual miracle and that's our yearly christmas takeover called a hard day silent night both it's incredible 
You got to see it. Uh, we'll eventually be able to get the official rights to do it. Right now, we just do it in concert version in an outdoor space so that we can be inclusive to everybody regardless of their medical preferences. Uh, and we're going to do it every year in bigger and better places to basically inspire people to know that the individual can make a profound difference. Every baby is a miracle, whether it's Mary's immaculate conception that she lied about when she really just went off and got knocked out by somebody. <laughs> but, but, you know, the miracle birth happened anyway. Um, the other two musicals, Box and Harry Beecher Stowe's uh, writing pictures were written in conjunction with a school that the same composer of the both, the same uh, organizer of the, the Beatles' Gospel Activity, he was the head of the musical theater department, and I went in with him and wrote these musicals, Box and Writing Pictures, with the kids in the school. So we constructed these musicals based on books they had to read. They had to read Harry Beecher Stowe's uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, which outlines the stories of slavery of the time. So they learned about slavery, wrote a musical about slavery, and they basically got educated about modern day slavery, which is really a different story than what we're told here. There's, there's slavery, back in the 1800s that we have our as our traditional theme but it's really the irish that were you know the most depressed you guys might know um they were the original slaves the og were the irish slaves but today there's more modern day slavery and and people sold into sexual slavery and work labor situations than there even was back in the day you know from our traditional harry beecher slow time so um very informative and very enlightening experience to work with a group of kids to to take apart a massive novel like that and then relate it to today's world of slavery as well and to perform that in front of people we could never get it done now it would be canceled right away <laughs> culture they'd be like you can't talk about the slaves like that and uh you know so but then there was another musical called box which is about a dude in the same time who got into a box and mailed himself from virginia to maryland to freedom across you know the mason dixon line where there were slavery was legal in the in in the south and illegal in the north so he got in a box and just mailed himself to this to the to the to the free the free north and popped out of the box so Good musicals about good subject matter that were very necessary. So uh, thank you for that question. That's incredible. That's cool. Absolutely. The Beatles thing sounds unbelievable. I want to see it now. Yeah. 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 You uh, got to see it. Yeah. That's definitely on the list. But I, uh, I stumbled upon your YouTube channel and uh, I absolutely love the uh, singing in the streets. Ah. I've been I'm absolutely smashing through them. I've loved it, but I believe I can fly in the airport was beautiful. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? What um what gave the idea to try? I'm just gonna sing wherever the fuck I like. And um like yeah, I mean I was on the street. I mean, I've been walking up and down New York City streets all my life singing, and during the pandemic I filmed myself singing about my coffee or my hot chocolate and i was like oh this is this is you know this is a good way for me to just pop something out every day that's easy that i don't have to worry about editing that i don't have to worry about all the production value film it and post it to youtube right afterwards and uh that became a series that was easy to do i mean you know i, I was hoping to gather more of a of a following. I really wanted to be consistent and do something that was easy to do. Uh, as most social media managers have all recommended that I be regular in order to really build a following. And of course it didn't work, but uh, I was regular anyway. I did over a hundred videos. It was almost like one a day, sometimes more. Uh, and then that that extended into singing on the streets, walk and talk. So I do a little song and then I do a little talk at the end of it uh, to basically just capture more value of who I am in that moment, what I was doing, basically what we're doing here with a little less editing, a little less production uh, value necessary and uh, just to get get things expedited. And uh, I should probably go back to do it again. Um, because I, I really feel that there's a value there. Unfortunately, it did not build the following that 
you know, when you paint your nails every day that you get. Because if you were to paint your nails a different color every day, you'd have seven million followers <laughs> in like two and a half weeks. But if you sing your face off great songs that everybody loves, you don't really increase your followers that much. I'm not sure why painting nails. But so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sing on the streets while painting my nails. <laughs> And then I'll be how do you say, oh my God, Jason Page has 12 million followers in two months because he painted his nails. <laughs> I think that's that's what'll do it. But you uh, that yeah, that's, that was my, that was, you know, and then I, I actually did so many of those fucking things that I forgot and I started repeating songs again. I was like, oh shit, I already sang that song. I ran out of songs to sing, if you can believe that. Holy, I can't even think of a song to sing because I just 10 million songs, but I sung them all already. <laughs> <laughs> I say I absolutely love your parody songs as well. Um, and obviously, from what I read, you did a parody song with The Rock dressed as a Pokemon. Yes, I did. I mean, that was the, that was one of the first things. The Rock, con- the Rock's people contacted me, and they were like, "Yeah, we want to do a video." Poke Rock. <laughs> you can't catch the Rock. Poke Rock. And I was like, "All right, I'll I'll sing that. I'll sing that for a fee." And then they wanted to put me on video on the Rock's channel. And it got, you know, the, that's the other thing that can bump your subscribers is getting on an influencer's channel like that. Painting your nails and getting on an influencer's <laughs> channel. Like the rock. Paint your nails or work with The Rock. They're the only two no. ways to be successful. There's only two ways. And, I and you know, uh, and I'll do both. If I got to <laughs> do both, I got to do both. It's all about our social media numbers. All you need to do is paint The Rock's nails and you'll take oh, over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't paint The Rock's nails. <laughs> That was that before was- I even knew what Pokemon Go was and that The Rock could be a Pokemon. He was like, you know, parodying the game Poke- the, uh, Pokemon Go. And I wasn't even familiar with Pokemon Go at the time. It was just it had just come out. The resurgence had just happened. People just started playing the song again on Spotify. And, uh, and you know, people started contacting me to do fun stuff like that. That's amazing. Jay, I feel like we barely touched your career. You've done that much. But if we, if you were to point someone in the direction of something you've worked on to check out, you're like, this, this is what I've done. I'm so proud of this. What would it be? What would you like get people to go look at? Um, interesting. Um, I, I, I think I'd like them to see my band videos that I don't have public. That, <laughs> that you can't see. <laughs> that I made privatized on my on my YouTube channel once YouTube started to wake up. Once people started to wake up once and started to get woke and canceling each other it was exactly about the time when the Pokemon theme song resurged in, in like late 2016. So I rebranded myself and I privatized all of the things that I would most want people to see. So you can't see the things that I would most want you to see. Um, because they would be canceled and they would enlighten you and they would maybe steer you in a different direction. And I think it's more important for you to find those directions on your own and not through me because I don't want them to get canceled. <laughs> I don't want them to cancel me. So, so basically, uh, at some point, um, when we have very secure alternative plan- platforms and I have secured my, you know, my celebrity status to the to the to the degree that people will that I won't get canceled because I've got more people on my mailing list and more people watching my Odyssey page than my YouTube page then I will unprivatize those things or at least I'll post them on other channels and those things are you know they're just a little more insightful funny videos parody videos that I've that I've done in the past that are a little more enlightening but but, you know, they're along the lines of my COVID-19, got to trace them all video. My Bitcoin, got to cash them all video. <laughs> my Ron Paul, uh, got to catch them all the delegates video where I use my voice for sociopolitical aims and funny me, funny ways to communicate ideas. Uh, until then, you can just watch my Bitcoin video. You can watch the COVID-19 video and uh, some other funny videos that I've done uh that do that but but i think yeah that that are you know uh, our most important voices are voices that we that we can exhibit in a, in a quiet way with people that are willing and listening waiting to listen not 
when we're trying to be out there shouting our truths and like trying to convince people. I want people to make their way to the to the message and not be uh, I don't want to I'm not blasting my message anymore. I'm just basically leaving it over here quietly. And when people make their way to it, it's a little bit more impactful than me blasting my message, which is how I've basically lived my life for up, up until uh, 2016. I've been a blaster of my message. Now I'm just a quiet speaker of my message. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, check out my YouTube channel, check out my other channels, my Odyssey channel, which is a mirror of the YouTube channel, but that's going to start to have things that are not allowed on YouTube uh, okay. soon. Um, <clears throat> until then, oh, the message is, wait, hold on, I'll get it for you. Oh God, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I usually have it back here in the shot somewhere. Uh, over here, there it is. Yeah, that is incredible. It says, Use imagination to creatively self express, and that's that. that's pretty much the you know, that's the principle. Use imagination to creatively self express. Use imagination to creatively self-express. 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 Use your imagination to creatively self-express. Imagination to creatively self express. Yeah, that's pretty much the principle that I try to live by is to use my imagination to creatively self express. To be the best you that you can be, uniquely you. And uh, I do that through uh, my imagination and get up in the morning and think about how can I creatively become more expressed as who I am in the world and share that with the world so uh i can do that on alternate platforms a little bit more because our self-expression may not be uh, admittable by some other platforms what guy what are you what platform are you guys on on this uh thing where's your your main distribution we post the audio so spotify i'm on it but we also post it on youtube so we we basically everywhere we can <laughs> okay, cool. So you're, you're, you're YouTubing. You're, you're, you're challenging the YouTube paradigm with all this uncopyrighted written music that I've just created. And some <laughs> copywritten music that yeah. might flag something here and there. <laughs> That'd be absolutely fine. I would do anything <laughs> for love. You're going to get flagged for that. They're going to go, oh, that's meatloaf. You can't have that on there. And I'm down. <laughs> Tom, have you got any more questions before we start to wrap up? Yeah, so what's the focus now then? Is it more on, you say you've got a band at the moment and you're recording, etc. So is it more focused on that or is there other projects that you're working on that you're hoping to, you know, bring into um, the ether? Yeah, yeah. Well, the ether is uh, expanding in many ways. There's a lot of, uh, I've done theme songs for three separate blockchain-based companies. Devolution is one that I hopefully will be recording a video for the theme song. It's just been released and it's... Uh, Got the power to the people and they're taking control. Uh, Devolution is a whole new world of 3D NFT gaming, play to earn in the NFT metaverse of Devolution. Uh, capture your Pokemon-like characters and you evolve them and you earn Devo coin 
in this ecosystem. Uh, Pokemon is another type Pokemon like uh, NFT collectible game, and we've got TCG World. Use TCG coin to build your world in the metaverse with us. So come on, get in, get on. Get in, get on to TCG World where you actually can build a whole your whole property in the metaverse. You buy land and then you can actually interact. You can do interviews. You can post your interviews inside of your venue that you create with your streaming wall of video or your, you know, your avatars or your your performance venue or your farm or your store or whatever you want to put in the TCG world, you can build these things into the TCG metaverse. Like kind of like what they're doing with Facebook, except built on blockchain technology and uh, for more focused just for the TCG world. So those theme songs are going to be out blasting. I'm doing uh, all the Collecticon Comic Cons this year. Uh, there's six of them in six different cities and some other Comic Cons. And uh, within that, I'm also going to be releasing my own music, which is uh, kind of a EDM style uh, music that, you know, focuses on the hero and the and and music that will inspire and can also be used as theme songs. <laughs> Amazing. So that licensing can happen. One of the theme songs I wrote for the Devolution world is in this the in this uh, TC in this uh, EDM style already. You can check that out online at uh, devolution world dot com. Um, and also on the streaming platform Spotify and Apple Music and all of that making some videos for that and the ultimate pokemon theme song edm remix is coming out which is going to be really excellent because it's like it's just a dope pokemon here i'll get i can give you guys a little preview off of off of here instead of trying to play it through the whole situation um it's really cool the edm pokemon theme song is going to be where is it? Here we go. It's gonna be hot. That's Just fucking amazing. That is unbelievable. <laughs> that needs um, to be played in like every club. It's gonna be hot. Ever. It's gonna be hot. So we got remixes coming out. We got a new Jason Page album that's really, really cool. Uh, songs like that that all fit with that remix style, the EDM vibe. And uh, you know there'll be some kind of live performances going on, going along with it as well. I think I might do the remix version at the Collecticon just to start promoting that song and get that song going as opposed to the old school one. But I also have one for next year because next year is the official 25 years of the song. We've had the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, but the song didn't happen until 1998. So it's really 2023 that the song is 25 years old and I have a 25th anniversary remix that I've been working on already. That's like a Bohemian Rhapsody style of it. So, oh. You know, I got some content for the Pokemon people. I've got these cards on my website that I'm busting out. Matter of fact, uh, you know, I got the trainer cards. We're going to be giving these away to charity. <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, you know, and there's all kinds of new cards. This actual company, Lightning Card Packs, they have, they do a thing where they put one card of Jason Page card in here. Actually, I'll show you. It's a new Jason Page card. Uh, here it is. One new Jason Page card that goes in with a stack of cool Pokemon cards. Like, here's what, what came in that pack. 
This is basically what you get in a lightning card pack. You get four dope co- Pokemon cards that are. Oh, that's the Jason Page card. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And then they give you four Pokemon cards that are all like decent Pokemon cards in a lightning card pack for I think it's like 40 bucks. So you get like good cards and a brand new original Jason Page card. 250 of the people get this card signed. There's 250 signed ones inside of that whole thing. So and you get the lightning box as well. So Amazon, Amazon is selling that shit. So there's some really cool. uh really cool products coming out from myself and from other people. I do auctions on Facebook streams. I don't know if you guys are in the auction world, uh, Pokemon communities, but there's, you know, I do auctions. I got slabs that I auction off. I got oh my days. And the new Jason Page cards were actually authenticated by PSA. You can actually go to PSA and have them authenticate a Jason Page card. So that's, that's, that's happening. Awesome. There are just so many, there's so many things happening, you know, in, with regard to like pro, the products that are coming out and people are making making cards of me with all kinds of different, you know, different kind of designs and stuff. And here's another way. There's one other card here. Check this one out. This is made by a dude called Poke Snack. It is really dope. That's badass. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my days. Cool stuff on the back. It's like the old school Pokemon card. It looks exactly like it, right? That is sick, That's yeah. So, no evolution. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, so anyway, there's just lots of really cool products coming out. JasonPage.com is blowing up. And, uh, and uh, you know, we'll get some, we'll get, we're gonna get some picture vinyls made of these new remixes to distribute to people. Um, as you may have known, I have one vinyl made that got sold almost all out of the Pokemon theme song on vinyl oh, wow. and uh, different, different fun products that, that collectors, you know, a lot of collectors come to me for autographs for on cards and weird stuff like this. So that's awesome. It shows you know, how much though that, that song affected so many people's lives. It's yeah. incredible. It's absolutely, there's nothing like it on the world uh, that has ever existed. I, I'm absolute, have profound gratitude for everything that's happened. Um, I, it, it, I'm not the celebrity. The song is the celebrity, and it's a celebrity because of you guys, because of your efforts in the world and your interest and your commitment to the the time and energy you put into it. I did four hours 25 years ago. Uh, And of course, all the rest of my work is all part of who I am. Um, But now I've just in the past four or five years, I'm catching up by learning about the cards by, you know, starting, you know, to, to, to go around and actually perform the song and understanding the ecosystem and then creating more value for the ecosystem. But you guys have been have been had that song and that your your gameplay and the cards and all the other things and the cosplaying and the interaction with the Pokemon communities and the websites and the YouTube channels and the art and everything that's been going on is just from the people. And that has, it's 4,000 hours you guys spent to my four hours. So I'm just trying to catch up and thank thank you for your efforts because you're making the ecosystem with your love of Pokemon and whatever it is that you're, you know, putting forth your your love of podcast of Chronicles of Podcast. Yes! That's your love. That's your, that's your effort. That's your energy. That's what makes the ecosystem grow. And I'm growing it to whatever I degree I can with, with my energies now. Pokemon is a company in Japan, people going to work, making money, doing things, but we're actually making love doing things down here because of our love of it. And I'm responding to the love of the fans and the love of the people making stuff and the love of you guys doing a podcast because you're not getting paid to do this and I'm not getting paid to do this. We're doing it because we love. Yeah. Absolutely. And the ecosystem has inspired that. So 
you know, th again, thank you for 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 the love that you guys have have put into the world in this form, this energy, this effort. But also thank you, Jason, for everything that you've done. You know, your voice is sensational and I'm going to be blasting you out for the rest of this evening, this week, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Uh, to the point where my other half will probably just punch me in the face and tell me to stop doing it. Hey, it's but only I, half you? Yeah, there's only half of me at the moment. Yeah, that's why you can always <laughs> the top half, you see. So. <laughs> I see, I see. The bottom half is going gonna, is gonna to come in later on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, did you ever think that your life would turn out the way it has? Yes, yes, all the time. This is uh, exactly as I manifested it. It just looks a little, it just, it just, you know, the colors are a little uh, sharper than I imagined that they were. Yeah. But yeah, I imagined it. I definitely imagined it. I just imagined it with my long Bon Jovi hair <laughs> and uh, the this, this short hair that I have now. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I imagine the, 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 the same, the same essence of, of what we're experiencing on this podcast. Did you ever imagine your podcasting to all these people and that you're putting out your word and your, your interviews and your questions and your actual message to the world? You know, it's, yeah, you did imagine it. You just don't, we, we just don't imagine how far it can go after yeah. we put ourselves out there. And uh, that's good because then we can we can use our imaginations, which is our superpower, to get this thing out to even more people, to create more happiness, more awareness, and more value. You guys are creating value, and this and just imagine how much value, how many places you can place this value. This is a coin that you've just made. This is a gold nugget of value to human beings to see and watch and share every one of your podcasts. So get those nuggets, those gold nuggets out in every conceivable place so that people can stumble on them, pick up that gold nugget, feel the value, and then add that value to themselves and go out and be their own gold nugget of value to the rest of the world. Beautiful. I love it. Jason, before we let you go, would you like to play our little game that we like to play with our guests? Sure, Let's sure. Let's play the game. It's called the quick fire. It's called the quick fire. It's called the quick fire. It's the quick game. It's called the quick fire. It's a quick game. It's called the quick fire. It's a quick game. It's called the quick fire. It's a quick game with the quick fire. It's a quick game with the quick fire. It's a quick game. All right, what's a game? Fire. What's a game, guys? Yeah. Another word. It's a quick fire round. We ask you five questions and you answer them as quick as you can. It's all about you, so you're gonna know the answer. Quick fire. All right, quick fire. Here we go. Quick fire. Your favorite pizza topping? Cheese. Strong start. Strong start. Like it. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> Who would play you in the movie of your life? Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent answer. Great answer. <laughs> what is your favorite joke to tell? Uh, for Nikolai Will. Will, 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 Will. For Nikolai Will. 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 I'm not going to tell it, but that's the punch. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, how do you take your tea or coffee? Uh, warm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> last but not least, if you were to go into a time machine and give one piece of advice to young Master Jason Page, what would that be? Ooh, I would say smoke less weed. <laughs> smoke less weed. Smoke less weed. <laughs>
got to smoke less weed than your mama and your daddy do so that you can do more than they do. You got to smoke less weed so you can be more productive and give more to the world that's around you. Smoke less weed, smoke less weed, eat more healthy and you're gonna be better. Smoke less weed and you're gonna be better than you were the day before. Smoke less weed. Smoke less weed. Smoke less That's fucking incredible. (laughs) That was a very bizarre and strange message, but I guess it (laughs) It was. It's not my fault for smoking more weed. It's it's society's fault and my parents' fault for, you know, having done it so much and normalizing it before it became normalized in society. And and it also goes for drink less alcohol, smoke less weed. Uh, eat less shit. It's it's all the ways that we bat ourselves on the head to stop ourselves from doing things. Uh, the the chemical onslaught. We are being slowly poisoned by chemical companies, uh, and basically that's that's what it is. The weed is another chemical company poisoning you right up the street now. The alcohol company is the same thing right up the street, every corner store, every bar, knock yourself on the head and become 20 to 50% less productive the next day because you, you went out and drank or you smoked. So, you know, if we can, if we can stop that, we would be twice as productive of a population. I think if we can stop smoking weed, stop so, or smoke less weed, drink less alcohol, and eat less shit. Just eat real foods. That, 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 that's the key to success right there. Everybody's just knocking there. I mean, even our shirts are filled with toxic dyes that are put in to our shirts. And we, we need to wash that shit out before you, before you dye your shirt, before you wear your new shirt. Uh, the air we're breathing is filled with toxicity. The water he's drinking, it's got shit in it. All of this stuff, you know, it just toxicity to slow us down. And, uh, you know, let's let's not do it. Media is the same thing. Just more media to slow us down and bang ourselves in the head to make us numb, to make us dizzy, to make us less productive. So my young self didn't smoke weed. It didn't want it wasn't sitting in front of the TV seven hours a day watching nonsense. It was not, well, I was eating shit because my mom was feeding me shit, but <laughs> less shit back in the day and no weed smoking, no alcohol smoking. And that child has the imagination and the, the capacity and the energy for finding stuff out that we as adults need to reattach ourselves to. That, that, that third grade running home to watch Pokemon because you're so excited about a thing that you're everything else doesn't matter just doing that and then if then getting those cards afterwards and learning how to do the cards because it was the funky thing you were most excited about you smoke less weed you drink less alcohol you eat less shit you'll have that excitement that a passion and uh thank you for my three-year-old self for telling me that and great fucking question you guys you guys made had some really good questions inspired some really good answers so thank you for that no, thank you, Jason, yeah. more than anything for doing this, for taking time out of your day to sit here, make, create some crazy ass shit with music wise. Like everything's been, <laughs> yeah. it's been a beautiful experience and generally one of my favorite interviews that we've ever done. Absolutely. Oh, so much Excellent. Fun. When is this thing coming out? February uh, 11th. Yes. All right. All right. You're going to edit all, uh, edit all, all, all out of my uh, offensive language? No. <laughs> no. Nope. Of course not. Of course not. It's too much hard work, Jason. Come on. Let's <laughs> let it all in there. If we get shut down on YouTube, we get shut down. It's it. We'll put it on Odyssey. So, you guys yeah, have exactly. the Odyssey channel yet? You got your mirror channel on Odyssey? No, but we'll fucking make it. Join, I never heard of it until you mentioned it. Yeah, join Odyssey, and Odyssey will mirror your YouTube channel. Everything on your YouTube channel, they'll lift it, put it on their channel. If you ever get shut down on YouTube, it's all there on Odyssey. Every time you post, they copy what you did on YouTube to Odyssey. You're safe. You're preserved on a blockchain for all eternity. Very important. Never know that. Absolute hero. Thank you so much, Jason. We really, really appreciate you. And just for for all this, like this has been a, such a great hour and a half. Like, but so much fun. 
You're welcome. When you pop it up there, make sure you put jasonpage.com for all of the uh, all of the cards people can get autographed and signed and uh, spread the word. Spread the word. Well. It's coming out. Uh, we're going. We're going all the way to the Super Bowl. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sore subject for Tom. At the Super Bowl. That's what we're that's that's what we're going for. So you know, that's all the way. Did you ever think you'd be singing a Pokemon theme song at the Super Bowl? Yes, there it is. Yeah, actually, yeah, it was proof of it. <laughs> That'll be unreal, by the way. Maybe you guys can announce me at that thing as well. Yeah, guys, yes, 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 we will. That's the idea, right? Cool. Before, before you go, any plugs, social medias you want people to go. Jasonpage.com has been renovated slash shopped for all the shopping needs. And then, uh, you know, IG, follow me on IG, follow my YouTube channel, Jason Page. Uh, but most importantly, go to my website, sign my newsletter and get, pick it up. Gotta get that call. Get the free ringtone. And, right uh, so, you know, <laughs> then, then we're personally connected because I can email you. If we get, ever get ever get shut down on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, we still have an email contact. And I think that's the most important way people are going to be able to stay in touch is, is through email. Uh, you know, especially when when I start to uh, I start to reveal the, <laughs> the EDM Jason Page. <laughs> beautiful jason thank you so much for doing this it means the world like i said we had an absolute blast talking to you you're welcome you're welcome gentlemen it was a it was a great fun great fun to be here with you i'm glad i, I hope i didn't talk too much i mean yeah that's what that's yeah. what the yeah. point is so. So, so absolutely thank you so much my friend enjoy the rest of your day so you take care of yourself and we'll see you soon thank you sir appreciate it <laughs> jason p Chronicles of a way to end an interview it really is <laughs> there you go gents <laughs> obviously hey jamie do you like being cozy i do and do you like staying cozy i like that even more then just heading over to www.staycozyclothing.com where you can find hoodies tees sweaters and much much more and just enter The Chronicles as one word at checkout to receive 10% off your order. And make sure you follow them on the Instagram at Stay Cozy Clothing to keep up to date with all the new designs. Remember guys, that's The Chronicles as one word at checkout to receive 10% off your order. And now back to this week's episode. Just, is that not the greatest intro to a podcast ever? Is that not the greatest interview <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Our podcast ever>. <laughs> <laughs> just phenomenal. Just the that man loves a soundboard. If anyone has ever loved a soundboard, <laughs> Jason. Jason, seriously though, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for making that evening so special, making that interview so special, for taking the time out to sit and chat to us. It was just everything we could have possibly ever ex- expected and more. It was beautiful. Watch, l- l- so look much. at our faces when we're dancing, like. Away and just like where there's a point where we look at each going like, what is going on? That's, the, that's my favorite thing about this in the start of that interview is because oh, his music starts playing before he turns up, and me and you are just like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> just superb, and Jay- I will forever refer to this as the best apocalypse ever. It was beautiful. Jason, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to us. We really appreciate you. We hopefully will have you back again soon. And we really hope that you guys enjoy listening to it as we did recording it. Hey there, I'm Frank Guglielmelli, and I'm the narrator for the audio drama feed. Featuring such audio dramas as Bounty Hunters, 
Marty and Mars, Val Toby, and so much more. You can find all of these wonderful programs on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Or you can go to our website at www.audiodramafeed.com. We are thrilled to be affiliated with the Chronicles of Podcast with Tom and Jamie.